So here we are asked to evaluate the integral of a rational function. A rational function is basically one polynomial divided by another polynomial. And so this suggests that the technique of partial fractions would be the most advisable in this case. And it does turn out that that is going to be the technique we use. But in order to use that technique, we have to be able to factor the denominator. And this denominator, unfortunately, doesn't factor. So we are given a problem that requires partial fractions, and yet we can't factor the denominator. What are we to do? So usually in that case, what's going to work really well is to take your denominator and to complete the square. So that's our first approach here is to complete the square in the denominator. And we, of course, will review how to do that. So what you do is you write your polynomial x squared minus 12x. But before you include the constant of 37, you're going to take the coefficient of x, which in this case is negative 12. And what you'll do is take that coefficient, divide it by 2, and then square it. We'll simplify that in just a moment. Then you can put on your plus 37. But then be careful, because if you decide to add a constant into the denominator, then you better make sure you also subtract that same constant in order to maintain the original expression. You do not want to completely add a new constant because that would change the problem. So by adding the constant here while simultaneously subtracting it there, you essentially have zero. And that indeed keeps the original expression the same. So just make sure that you include that subtraction of that new constant as well. Now, negative 12 divided by 2 is 6, and then 6 squared is 36. So in fact, what we've done in the denominator is we have added and subtracted 36. And we will see why that's important in just a moment. So now we have this plus 36. Over here, we're going to have 37 minus 36, which of course is just 1. So we'll just put a plus 1 over here. Now look carefully at what we've done, and you can see that we've created a perfect square trinomial. And what that means is it can factor. So that actually factors as x minus 6 times x minus 6. In fact, why don't we be a little more succinct and just write that as x minus 6 squared, and then you still have your plus 1. So this is going to be a form that we are able to use here. But before we can use it, we actually have to let u equal x minus 6. And we will see why that's going to allow us to do the partial fractions technique. Let's differentiate both sides. So we'll do the derivative. du is equal to 1 dx. And then we can come back here and we can start to make a little bit of substitution here. The x minus 6 in the denominator, that's going to be u. So you're actually going to have u squared plus 1. And your dx, we saw from the derivative we computed earlier, is actually du. But now you still have this x minus 3. So we have a little bit of a problem here because we have a mixture of variables. We have x and u. We don't want that mixture of variables. So if we go back to our problem here, if we were to add 6 on both sides of that little substitution that we made, then we would see that u plus 6 is equal to x. So what we'll do is actually substitute u plus 6 for this x right there. And this is convenient because now we'll have an expression in terms of just u. Now, in fact, the numerator can be simplified because we have 6 minus 3. So that's just going to become u plus 3. Now that we've rewritten it in this form, we can actually rewrite it just a little further. And what we're going to do is split the numerator. At least that's what I call it. So that's when you have a quantity plus another quantity over some denominator. And you split it up by rewriting it as a over c plus b over c. So that's going to work here. We have this is our a, and this is sort of our b, and then the entire denominator is our c. So following that little rhythm there, you'd have u over u squared plus 1 plus 3 over u squared plus 1 with respect to u. Now, each of these integrals needs to be evaluated separately. So what we'll do is, for the first one, a basic 
well, I almost said u substitution, but we've already used u, so let's do v. Let's let v equal the denominator, u squared plus 1. If we differentiate both sides, we'll have dv is equal to 2u du. Let's solve for du, so divide both sides by 2u, and then you'll have dv over 2u is equal to du. So with these little substitutions, we can rewrite the first integral. We'll have u over, now instead of u squared plus 1, we will replace that with v. And then instead of du, we will replace that with dv. Sometimes my v's look like u's, so this will be dv over 2u. These u's will cancel. You'll have a factor of 1 half that you can bring outside of the integral. So it's 1 half times the integral of 1 over v dv. We all know this integral is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of v. And then we know that v was equal to u squared plus 1. So that finishes off that integral. We also need the second integral. So let's take a look at that one. This is 3 over u squared plus 1. What we'll do is factor out the 3. So we'll have 3 times the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1. And then you probably would need to consult a table of integrals. There might be one presented at the beginning of this section of your textbook, but many of us perhaps know that the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1 is actually just equal to the arc tangent of u. So this actually becomes 3 times the arc tangent of u. So with that in mind, we can actually put these back together to create the final integral, 1 half times the natural log of u squared plus 1, and then plus 3 times the arc tangent of u. Don't forget your constant of integration, and also let's not forget that the u needs to be replaced with the very original substitution that we made. We had said that u was equal to x minus 6. So in fact, the last step is to go back and to rewrite the problem in terms of x. So we'll have x minus 6 squared plus 1 for that u. And then for this u, same thing, we'll replace it with x minus 6. And so here is the final answer.